if you would, turn in your Bible to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Verse, begin on verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and sa God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so, and God saw everything that he hath made, and behold, it was good. And ev an evening and the morning were the sixth day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much for just uh, giving us a, a, a word from you directly to us. One that we can read, one that we can study, one that we can glean from. One that doesn't have to be uh, interpreted for us from some uh, individual, but one that we can, we can see and read and understand with our own eyes. God, I thank you so much for your word. I pray that you would give us something from your word tonight. God, I pray that you would truly empty me of me this evening and fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray that something would be said this evening that would... Uh, impact the hearts and lives of each one here tonight. God, I pray that your perfect will would be done. In Jesus' name I do pray, amen. Let me ask you a question. If you were to sum up the whole Bible in one word, what would it be? True? Infallible? But the... the, the the, the contents of the Bible. If you, you'd be able to sum it all up into one word, what would, might it be? Holy, faithful, love. What would? Real. All right, good. Faith. Race. Grace. Grace, okay. Jesus, all right, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, that's good. I think I know how I would sum up the entire Bible in one word. Now, this is a word that's used a lot in the King James Bible. Um, I didn't actually go and check it out, but I, uh, in, in study... I saw that in the NIV, it was actually only used one time in the entire uh, NIV Bible. But in the um, King James Bible, it's used uh, in 1,275 verses in the Bible. used about 1,360 sometimes or something. And um, this is a word that, um, as we're going through the, you know, this year, the theme, what manner of persons ought ye to be, Right? And so on <coughs> Wednesday nights, Pastor has been doing a lot of the B and then fill in the blank. Last week was be quiet, right? And um, so I thought, you know what? I can't really do any of those because he's probably going to come to them. We've got a few more weeks in the year, right? So I, I, I thought, I I'm still want to go with that B concept, though. So we're going to talk about the one word that I think sums up the message of the entire Bible, and that is behold. Behold. What's that word behold mean? That be word behold, it does. It means pay attention. It's an interjection. It's, it's, it's that 
it's that word that you always put those exclamation points behind, right? It's that, that word that means uh, see, lo, look, behold. It's that word that is don't miss this. And if there's any word that I think that uh, God would tell us and, and to, to look at the entire Bible, it's don't miss this. Behold. When, when we see that word behold, I think we should take a look and see what it's there for because it's pretty, pretty important. And having been uh, you know, used 1,275, in 1,275 different verses in the Bible and 1,300, what does that say, 26 times in the Bible, that tells me that there's a lot we need to look at. And I only have about 30 minutes. But if you're here at RU, or uh, if you uh, come to RU, you know that doesn't really mean much. <laughs> to behold means to see, to view, to face, to look out, to regard, to watch, to consider, to behold intensely, to observe fully, to look with attention and earnestness, to survey with accuracy, earnest spiritual contemplation, to look at purposefully to perceive, to apprehend, to learn, to know, calling attention to what may be seen or heard. So my question is, what is it that God wants us to behold in his word? And we're, we're only going to go through about uh, 125 of them. But, it, you know, there's a lot. No, we're really only doing 10. But um, there, there's... Obviously, a lot in Scripture that God wants us to behold. So what we're going to look at, get, look at is going to be focused on God and who God is when he says behold. Because that gives us some, you know, some characteristics and some character traits of who God is. The first one we read here in verse 29, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb of the field. And in verse 31, behold. It was good. I'd come and say, behold the creator. Behold the creator. The, the law of first mention, pastors talked about in Bible studies uh, before, and it's a very important uh, time. And this is the first time that that word behold is used in verse 29. God said in verse 29, and God said, behold I've given you every herb bearing seed. Look at this. Pay attention to this. I have given you. Who's given you? God says, I have given you. Behold, I am the creator. I'm the one that's given it, given it to you. Behold, I am the creator. Let's look at the next one. I think we can see it uh, just a few pages over in Genesis chapter 6. Now we have, you know, we have, have behold the creator. But then if we look at Genesis chapter 6 and we go to verse 10, we're seeing the narrative of Noah. Noah, he begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. In verse 13, he says, behold, pay attention. That's what he's saying, right? Behold, look at this, pay attention. I will destroy them with the earth. If we drop down in verse 17, he says, Behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. He doesn't want to get it mistaken, does he? This is God, the judge. He says, I'm doing this. This isn't just a, an unnatural phenomenon. 
or a natural phenomenon, if you will. This isn't just a bunch of, bunch of rain clouds just decided to uh, go above you and you know, pour out. It, God, God says, I did this. Don't, don't mistake in it. How many things does he try to do in our lives? Uh, you know, you know we, we have, I don't know about you, but I'm, sometimes it takes a long time for God to knock me over the head and try to get to change my way of thinking. And so, oft times it takes something pretty big for him to say, you know what, ding dong, this is my way. You need to do it my way because your way has been done long enough and look where it's gotten you. A lot of times he tells me, behold, I'm doing this. Straighten up. And I think that's what he's saying to Noah. Behold, I caused the flood. This is me. I, 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 I'm doing this. I'm judging the earth. This is a big deal. Learn from it. Behold the creator. Behold the judge. Let's go a little further in Genesis. Believe it or not, we will make it out of Genesis tonight. We thought about not, but... In Genesis chapter 28, 13 and 15, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And behold, I am with thee, <clears throat> and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. I will bring thee again unto this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Behold, the promise keeper. He said, I'm going to do it. And I did it. He was a promise keeper before the promise keepers ever came about. God is a promise keeper. You know how many promises there are in Scripture? There are some awesome promises in Scripture. And these promises are things that, frankly, I have to hold to so that I don't get discouraged. I don't get frustrated. I don't get despondent because I know that, behold, look at this. What he says he'll do, he'll do. Behold the creator. Behold the judge. Behold the promise keeper. Everybody knows the account in Job. Job chapter 1. Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. The Lord's putting a parameter in there. Look, Satan, take a look at this. I am the protector of Job. You know your place. I am Job's protector. Do what you will, but don't touch Job. Behold, look, I'm in control still. This wasn't, this wasn't something that you know, God just says, yeah, whatever you say, go ahead, you, you, you do it. Sometimes the people talk about the, the account of Job and they, they act like God just you know, said, yep, do whatever you want. God was very real in Job's life. And he says, Satan, behold, you do what you will, 
but don't touch him. And then later on, he says again in uh, verse 15. Nope, in verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan again, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Look here, Satan. I'm in control. You don't take his life. But I think God was just really excited to see Job prove to Satan that, you know, God's a mighty God. And he really had control of Job's life. And Job had surrendered his to God. Behold, the protector. See, we'll get through these. Behold, the creator. Behold, the judge. Behold, the promise keeper. Behold, the protector. Now, we can go a little further and look in Isaiah. You may know where I'm going here. Isaiah 7, 14, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, look, look here. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, shall call his name Emmanuel. And in Matthew chapter 1, 23, again, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son. Luke 1, 31, again, says, And behold, look, see here, pay close attention to this. This is a big deal. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thine womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Behold the Christ child. Behold the Christ child. Not only is he a protector and a creator and a judge, but I'd like for us to see in Matthew. Chapter 6. Sermon on the Mount. Towards the end there. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew chapter 6, where are we? Verse 26. Behold, look at the fowls of the air. He's teaching these multitudes that when he went up into the mountain, his disciples came and do him, and then the multitudes came around, and he's teaching, and he said, Behold the fowls of the air. Look at the birds. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Behold, pay attention. I'll provide for you. Behold the provider. Behold the provider. Let's go a couple couple chapters over. This one's good. Matthew chapter 8. Verse 2 and 3, And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Behold, the miracle worker. Behold, the miracle worker. How about this one? He calmed the sea in verse 24. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and so much that the temp ship was covered with waves that he was asleep. And the disciples came to him and awoke, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Behold the miracle worker. How about this one? In verse 28, when he was come to the other side and to the country of the Gadarenes, there came to him, uh, met him, two possessed with devils coming 
out of the tombs exceeding fierce so that no man might pass that way. And, and behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us, suffer us uh, to go away into the herd of swine. And he said, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything. And what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, look at this. The whole city came out to meet Jesus. You know, when Jesus gets involved, things happen. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. Behold, he cast demons out. How about this one? Chapter 9, verse 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Behold, the miracle worker that healed the man sick of a palsy. How about in verse 18? We can see, and behold, and, and he spake these things unto them. Behold, there came a certain ruler, saying, My daughter's dead. And we can see later on that the daughter was brought to life. And then we see in verse 20, Behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, and he said within herself, If I may just touch his garment, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. Jesus turned about him, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. This is the miracle worker. How about down in... Verse 32, and they went out. Behold, they brought him a dumb man possessed with the devil. Caused him to speak. In verse 30 of chapter 20, we see again. And behold, two blind men sitting by the way. When they heard Jesus pass by, cried out, saying, Have mercy upon us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold, out, hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy upon us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said unto them, What will ye that I should do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Jesus had compassion on them, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. This is the miracle worker. We see, behold, that he, throughout all of Scripture, was a miracle worker. When's the last time we were able to open our eyes enough to see God work a miracle in our lives? There's not a single person in this room that God hasn't done a miracle for. Sometimes we're too blinded to see what those miracles are. When's the last time you thanked God for that miracle in your life? Maybe you say, I haven't seen any miracles in my life. I, I'd encourage you, if that's your thought, go home tonight. Just beg God to show you what miracle he's done in your life. Because I guarantee you, if you're alive today, if you have a family today, if you 
you have a home to go to today, if you have a church family today, God has done a miracle in your life. He's still in the miracle working business. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still does miracles. Behold the creator. Behold the judge. Behold the Christ child. Behold the provider. Behold the miracle worker. No, I'm missing one. Behold the promise keeper. Behold that protector. How about this one? Let's go to Luke. He had been sacrificed. He gave his life on that old rugged cross. They took him down off that cross and put him in the grave. Put him in the tomb. Three days later, stone was rolled away. They thought somebody had stolen him, right? And Jesus comes and verse 39 because they weren't really believing him too much. Look here. Behold my hands and my feet that it is myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. I mean, I, I can see it now, especially with the uh, entertainment and the TV and, uh, and all the superhero stuff. I, I can see it now. If Jesus appeared before us, you'd say, it's a ghost or it's a, you know, who, who, who knows what you'd say. And, and Jesus had to say, hey, look, behold, look, it's me. You're not seeing a ghost. It's not a spirit. I, it's me. If, you, if it wasn't me, you wouldn't be able to touch me and See, there's nail prints in my hand. Behold the living sacrifice. The, the verse in the Bible that we, we talk about so much, and when we're giving the gospel or presenting the gospel to someone, we use it every, every week in the prison. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, right? The wages of sin is death. That, that, that payment for sin, what wages, right? That payment for sin being death, that is not a um, negotiable payment. That is a mandatory payment. Sin requires death. I could pay for my sin. By dying and going to hell. That's, that's an option. Our life, our life is full of choices, right? I tell my kids all the time, I give you a choice. You can choose to do this and suffer the consequences, or you can choose to do this, and everybody can be happy. Which one do you choose? I'll take either one. You choose. You know, life is full of choices. And that's really what it comes down to when we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior is, we can either take this choice, me paying for all my own sin, or Jesus, that living sacrifice, that one that says, behold, see my hands. Aren't you glad we have that option? Aren't you glad life is full of choices? How about number nine? 1 John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Behold. Look at this. 
Pay attention. Behold the loving Savior. We, we're, we're talking about a God who is our creator and our protector and our provider and our, 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 our living sacrifice and our loving Savior. Man, I'm just so grateful that we don't have this cosmic killjoy of a God. Man, he loves us. Yes, he's a judge and he, he's just. But behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Revelation 3. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, he's that loving Savior, and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And lastly, we'll see all throughout Revelation. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come as a thief. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Jesus says, Behold, the returning Lord. Look, you're not going to have all this extra time to get ready for me. Be ready. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come as a thief in the night. Blessed is he, Revelation 16, 15, says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he. What's that word blessed mean? In a real simple sense, happy. You're going to be happy. You're going to be glad you did it. Happy is he. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Be, in, be, be ready, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Verse 20, uh, chapter 22, 7 says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed, right, happy. You're, you're going to be glad you did this. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy in this book. Verse 12 of that same chapter. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Behold, pay attention. Look at this. question tonight is what is it that you are beholding in scripture what is it that you're letting God show you in his word you know this there's 1275 verses with behold in it in here every time we open the scripture we should let God say behold take a look look here See what I have for you. Behold. He's the creator. He's that living sacrifice. He's that protector. He's that provider. He's all those things. But what is he to you through his word? There's, there's a gazillion more we could have gone through. I, I just encourage you, every time you look in here, you come across that word, behold. It's saying, look here. Pay attention. See what I put that there for you. That's what God wants for you. Behold. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for your word. God, I pray that we would behold and recognize that you are God. I thank you that we can behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I thank you that we can behold that one who is a miracle worker, healed the blind and sick and the lame, woman with the issue of blood, maniac of Gadara. Lord, I thank you that every time we open this book, 
we can say, Behold. Because that's what you've given to us. And you've said, Look here. But I pray that every person tonight has been given something from your word. Your word, you told us, will not return void. So I'm confident that there was enough scripture read that each person can leave here tonight with something from you. But I thank you for that promise. Thank you for who you are, that Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world, being that substitute for us. God, I pray that as we continue on this week, I pray that you would be honored. You would be honored in our lives. You would be blessed in our lives. And I pray that we would be able to bless you, Lord, in all that we do, all that we say. In Jesus' precious and holy name we do pray. Amen. Well, do I remember correctly that, Mrs. Wallace, you have a birthday today? Is that right? We need to sing happy birthday. We don't do it often, but if your birthday lands on the day and we know about it, I'm sure there's a lot of folks we don't know about. But if we know about it and your birthday lands on the day we're here, we like to wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Let's all stand. Let's sing the windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. If you need it, it's 128. 128. We'll sing that as our song of dismissal. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why you're happy. That's why I'm happy. That's why we're happy tonight. Amen. You are dismissed. Choir will begin in a few minutes.